Hello and welcome to Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host and business strategist. So thank you for joining us as we support you, the entrepreneur, and creating the clarity needed to create the time and financial freedom in your business. And so we do this by not only addressing your business needs, but also your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, and relationship needs as well. And so now join me in welcoming Tessa Colvin, Colvin to the show. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you. And so, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, we certainly want to make sure, first of all, if we haven't started the entrepreneurial journey, making sure we're just equipped <laughs> to handle this journey. And then if we are on this journey and in this process, just some tips and strategies and ways to kind of help keep us motivated so that we can have that success that we desire. And so, Tessa, before we actually dive into the interview, I love to play this game with my guests where I ask them three random questions. So, Tessa, are you game to play the game? I am. <laughs> okay. My first one, um, are you a cat person or a dog person? I used to be a cat person. Now I'm a dog person. <laughs> <laughs> what are these people that used to be a cat and now they converted to dogs? Okay. We, <laughs> I'm not even going to ask what caused that conversion. <laughs> I was out outnumbered, so. We're going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> and then do you prefer winter, spring, summer, or fall? Fall. Ah. And then as far as vacation spots, do you prefer the beach or the mountains? I'll take the mountains. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, once again, you know, as entrepreneurs, we certainly want to make sure that we're just doing things that will allow us not to become that statistic of, you know, what one in five right. businesses failing, what, you know, within the first within five, the first years. five mm -hmm. years. So, yeah, so we're just going to talk just a couple of things with Tessa when it comes to being an entrepreneur and some steps that we can take to ensure that we don't become one of those statistics. So, Tessa, just tell us a little bit about you and your business. Okay. I am a publishing consultant and a ghostwriter, and so what I do primarily is I take the stress out of book writing, whether that's from a publishing consultant's perspective or the ghostwriting, because storytelling is king. Storytelling is how you connect, whether you're a business, a speaker, a person, how, wherever you are navigating in life, you got to be able to connect your story to the people in the room, and that's what book writing is about. And I actually started out as a business coach. <laughs> Um, and I always tell people I was doing that before I even knew that was a thing, um, a natural business acumen, and it, it just was a natural progression. And so, you know, you kind of talk about your book and, you know, people writing books, especially as entrepreneurs and kind of using our book uh, as a business. And so tell us what have been some of the challenges for you when it came to you, because you kind of said you pivoted a little bit. So what have been some of the challenges that you had in starting your own business? Well, first of all, it was understanding that it's my business. It's my vision. It's my journey. And you have to eat the meat and throw away the bone. <laughs> you got to figure out what's for you and what's just a good rule of thumb in general. Some things aren't going to work for you. Some things are not going to, even if you're getting help from a strategist or a coach or a consultant, it's just a suggestion. It's a recommendation. You are the business owner. Nobody is going to tell you what to do. You have to decide. Leaders lead from the front. They get all of the information, all of the intel, and then they make a choice, an informed decision. And that was something that was challenging for me at first because it was like, well, this book said, or this person said, or I went to this workshop and they said, and so I've got to do it that way. And that, that led to empty bank account and long nights. Oh, and so we definitely do not want that as entrepreneurs. And so you kind of hinted at this a little bit, and I know that there are entrepreneurs that are experiencing this. You said you started off as a, as a business coach, but then you kind of made that pivot into uh, being a publishing consultant. So for you, mm -hmm. you know, what steps did you kind of go through to say, okay, it's time for me to make this transition? And then not only those steps, but then being okay, okay. with making the transition. So what had happened was, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, like I said, it was a natural, I have a natural business acumen. I just get it. My first business, I was, um, I was six and I count it because I made money. Um, <laughs> but I was selling candy in the bathroom and then my supplier shut me down. My supplier was my mama. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so that was the end of that business, cut me down, but I had a natural business acumen and it was, it was apparent. And what I found is that I was helping my, my clients start businesses and write books. And then it was more, let's just write a book. And then it was more, let's write a book. And I was like, okay, I need to stop playing and make the transition because it's already happening so I can get on board or I can be dragged. <laughs> 
and we don't want to drag anybody. No. So yeah, no. <laughs> and so, like I said, I just know, even for myself, you know, making those pivots and like I said, and being okay, because I know sometimes we're like, well, what will people think if I change? First I said I was a photographer and you know, now I said that I'm doing websites. So, you know, what will people think of me if I make right. this transition? So what do you say to that person? It's kind of, what will people think? Well, the what will people think, it's, it's irrelevant. It's what will the right people think. So it's somebody who's looking for the exact thing that you have. And so once they know, oh, that's you, I know you, I trust you, guess who they're gonna come to versus someone who just so happened to have the right title at the time. They're gonna come to the person that they know. We all know about know, like, and trust. It's important, it's a thing. People grow, people shift, and you don't owe anyone an explanation about your business growing and shifting. You just don't. Boom, just like that. <laughs> so thank you, Tessa. And so we're definitely going to continue this conversation right after these messages. Hello and welcome back to Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host, Beverly Wathauer. And so we've been having a conversation with Tessa Colvin. She is a publishing consultant. And so we've just been having a conversation about being an entrepreneur and some of the challenges that we face, um, you know, making that transition into being an entrepreneur. And so, Tessa, for you, what were some of the mindset shifts you had to make? Because there's definitely a difference between being an employee and being an entrepreneur. So yes. what were some of those mindset shifts you had to make? One of the main things was charging people for something I love to do. <laughs> it was a challenge. Um, I had to, I almost went through the, the different stages of grief. I felt angry, ashamed, all of that mm -hmm. because it's like, but this is so easy. People aren't going to want to pay for this. And I mean, I talked myself out of, I don't know, thousands of dollars probably <laughs> um, going through that process when the reality is People needed me to show up boldly, confidently, and tell them, hey, writing a book does not have to be hard. And even when I was a business coach, showing up and saying, you know, starting a business is a thing. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, that was challenging um, versus going into a corporate corporation every day and saying, what do you need me to do? Um, so that was, that was a challenge for me. It was a, I needed to grow and I had to grow fast. <laughs> Because, yeah, we can't afford to leave thousands of dollars on the table. No. So that was one of the shifts you had to make was actually, you know, actually pricing and not only the pricing piece, but then saying, hey, this is how much I charge for this. Right. Service. Do you want it? Okay. Right. And so what other shifts did you have to make from making that transition? The other shift was the time clock. Um, being a business owner doesn't exactly fit in nine to five. <laughs> um, we want to say we have operating hours, but there are times late at night I'm like, oh, I forgot to, or oh, I need to. And so guess who has to go do it? Either me, even if it's me delegating something. And it, ha it happens outside of the nine to five. So, and a caveat to that is just remembering to take lunch, that self-care piece. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a roller coaster ride. It's challenging. <laughs> okay, so remember to eat and go to the bathroom too. Right. <laughs> I <have> to right. Schedule <laughs> Put that on my schedule. <laughs> so you mentioned this word self care, and I hear this all the time. You know, when it comes to being an entrepreneur, what do we mean? What do you mean when you say self care? What is that? Self care is the key to not self destructing. We hear people say all the time, hustle, grind. Um, all of that kind of stuff. Well, first of all, I don't say that because hustling and grinding sound like it hurt. I'm more of a fluid and flow kind of girl. Like, let's just go with the flow. But self-care is about knowing what you need and making sure you get that. Whether it's, I need to go out and get some real vitamin D. I need to go sit and work on the patio. However that is, however it comes, like I will be unplugged on the weekend. I'm unplugged, it's okay. It's not, go it's not gonna shut down. I put in all of the fail safes. I have people in place. I got funnels, all of that stuff. They're in place, so if somebody has a question, guess what, I don't have to shut down the skating trip to answer a question for business. It's taking time to care for myself. That's amazing. And is that something, because when I think self-care, or I think some people think self-care, okay, that means I have to go on vacation for two weeks or I need to go off to the spa for a day. That's not? No. You can binge watch your favorite show. You just care for yourself and it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to feel guilty about it. That doesn't mean that you've got to work 16 extra hours this week. It's okay. Watch your show. You deserve it. 
<laughs> watch your show. <laughs> if it means, okay, I'm about to stream my favorite podcast and get caught up, do that. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and so you mentioned something else too. Um, and like I said, I know a lot of us, we do our business online. So we, you know, either work from home or we may have a remote office space. Um, you know, online is 24 seven. So how do I not fall into that trap of, okay, someone sent me a message at 10 PM and you know, okay, let me just go ahead and do a quick response or, you know, well, Hey, I'm up, you know, how do I kind of, you know, set those boundaries? And I'm glad you used that word because that is my, this is going to change your life, what I'm about to tell you. I need everybody to write this down. <laughs> Boundaries go both ways. They help you and them. They set an expectation in the relationship. If you have people who are inquiring about your service at 11 p.m. and you answer them, if they become clients, they expect that same thing. Boundaries go both ways. Do not message me in the middle of the night saying it's an emergency because if you are texting me for an emergency, something is off. <laughs> There's something wrong. It's not. It's going to be okay. Just taking that, understanding that boundaries help everybody, that's a big step. Yeah. And I think, you know, because it's online, so, you know, it could be 10 p.m. your time, but it might be 10 a.m. my time. So in my mind, I'm like, it's okay. But once again, just kind of communicating that exactly. these are my business hours in this particular time zone. So this is what we're operating right. in and stick with it. Exactly. Wow. Okay. That makes a whole lot of sense. And so for you, you know, we talked about some of the challenges that you faced. Um, what are some of the misconceptions that you feel people have before coming into this entrepreneurial space? One phrase, laptop lifestyle. Listen, <laughs> the laptop lifestyle is a wonderful idea, <laughs> but I will tell you entrepreneurship is more than a laptop. Okay. It's some, it is some grit, even though, you know, I like words like fluid and flow. It is some grit. It takes some tenacity. Um, that's not what happens when you step right out of the gate. It's just not, um, I, I guess this is the anti-commercial <laughs> that the laptop lifestyle is for a business that's scaling. Let's talk about that. Like nobody's hopping from startup, budding startup. These are still things, even mm -hmm. in the online arena, mm -hmm. there are six different phases of entrepreneurship. Don't have me break it down. Cause I will, but <laughs> that's the thing. Those are scaling businesses. Those are businesses who have skipped all of that, those steps that the budding they've done startup, they are scaling. That means that they have automatic money coming in. They can live the laptop lifestyle. It doesn't work like that in the beginning. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I was like laptop lifestyle. It was like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I didn't have one client, but I had built like 16 funnels. <laughs> Those are all of the things that distract you from what it is that you need to do to generate revenue in your business. That's powerful. And she said, key thing, I may have all these little, my website is beautiful. My logo is beautiful, but I don't have any clients. So, hey, and we're so, we're going to actually touch on that, the, the phases of your business. We're going to actually talk about that right after these messages. Hello and welcome back to Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host, Beverly Wathauer. And so we have been speaking with Tessa Colvin. She is a um, publishing consultant. And so we've just been having a conversation about, you know, being an entrepreneur. And so one thing she touched on right before the break was this laptop, laptop lifestyle. And you mentioned something about the six phases of business. So elaborate a little bit more about that. As with anything, there's a cycle. You know, you have budding. budding being a budding entrepreneur means you've got an idea. You don't have clients, you don't have even the equipment, tools, whatever it is to make that a true business. You've got an idea. Then you've got startup. You're a little bit past that whole budding entrepreneur phase. You might have a laptop, but you're not in the laptop lifestyle. You're still trying to figure out, am I an LLC? Am I a sole proprietorship? Um, do I need an office space? Will I be truly virtual? Can I hire someone? Do I need to have contractors? These are all of the things that go into startup mode. Startup and the higher part of startup is when you start getting a little money. <laughs> Notice I said a little money. You got to figure that thing out. You have to figure out you know, what payment gateways do you use? Like this is the found, these are the foundational pieces for your business. Um, one of the very first 
pieces of my business that I had was I help people register their business for real. For real. <laughs> it's more than, oh, that website's available. Yes, but is that name available? Have you registered it? Do you have a tax ID? These are all of the things that go into startup mode. This is the legwork. This is the real grassroots part. And then from there is when you start scaling. And you go into scaling, they call it some, right between there, survivor mode. I know we know survivor mode. <laughs> it sounds like that because it is like that. Like you are exhausted. You have probably wearing all of the hats. You, your admin, you're the, des the designer, you are delivering, you're doing it all, right? And that is when you shift into scaling. Then when you get into scaling, there's some other upper levels, mm -hmm. a couple more levels there. But scaling is all about bringing on staff. It's all about um, bringing on people to support you as a business owner and your business and your client. That's three different layers. You have staff. So the laptop lifestyle happens there. That's when the laptop lifestyle happens. And they don't say that in the commercials because it's just not sexy. Oh, okay. <laughs> So Tessa has told you, so look, <laughs> so I'm not walking in tomorrow and saying, hey, I have everything on. No, no we have to build. Okay, so it is a process. It is a process. And one thing I heard you say that I think is huge is treating your business like a business. Mm -hmm. And so that means, you know, I have all of my legal stuff in place. Right. So if we're serious about this thing, you want to make sure that you're actually, you have all of your little duckies in a row. Right. Okay, that the makes sense. The number one thing, the number one thing is having a business bank account. Not funneling it to your personal bank account. That's the recipe for disaster. And we can name some names. We know how that didn't work out. You can't mash up the two. You're two separate entities if you set it up right. You're two separate entities. So these are all of the things that, you know, you can't really make that sound exciting. So laptop lifestyle is a buzzword. It, people live that way. Um, it happens, but it's a process. It just doesn't say resignation this day, laptop lifestyle the next day. That doesn't happen. So we may just have our laps, laptop, but the lifestyle yeah, part. Yeah, the is lifestyle is, okay, is out the door. <laughs> it's not <laughs> there yet. You got to get there. No, no, you're not there yet. <laughs> and so for you, Tessa, you know, what in your background kind of prepared you to become an entrepreneur? Well, I told you about, you know, I was, I was cut down in my prime. I was, yeah, I was on my way to being a mom. mogul. Yeah, something about your mom shut down your business. Shut okay. me down. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. I bounced back and, you know, I'm good now. I'm over it a little bit. But from there, I, when I found out, I mentioned earlier that I didn't know business coaching was a thing. I was doing it. I was, I was mentoring people at my church. I was all of that stuff. And then once I found out that I was a business coach, I did what everyone else did. I went to school to become a business coach <laughs> and I went and got all of these degrees mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to be proficient in business mm -hmm. when the reality was I just wanted to validate why I was proficient in business. Ooh. So yeah, now I'm validated. <laughs> See my face, now I'm validated. But that's even how my business name was born. Um, my business name is Borrow My MBA. <laughs> Because I'm like, somebody ought to use it, right? <laughs> and, so, and so it's tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. You know, I would always come across people who says, I can't start a business because I don't have a degree. And I would say it all the time. Well, borrow mine. If that's the one thing keeping you from showing up and being the business owner that you desire to be, that you're assigned to be, you can borrow mine. I love it. So you guys hear that? We can borrow Tessa's. You we can borrow mine. <laughs> We don't have to borrow. Yeah, we don't have to go. And so, um, you know, what about life experiences? Because like I said, I know you said when you were younger, um, you know, how do you feel like that played a part? Did you like were your parents entrepreneurs? Did you have people in your family? They weren't. My parents and my family, they have a strong desire to learn. And so I, I, I kind of fought them a little bit for the <laughs> going back to school. But um, what I saw, I got a job. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I became an adult. I got a job. And what I realized was I didn't like it. Um, I did not like that. I mean, I was good at the jobs that I got. Mm -hmm. I was good at it. I was proficient. I moved up and all of that. But I did not like being the one to train a manager that's going to be over me. I know we've been there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been there. I didn't like that. I didn't like not being given or allowed positions um, because I didn't have a piece of paper, even though I was already doing the job. How many of us have been there? And I was like, you know what? This is not going to work for me. <laughs> and I would say it all the time in my rants. I should just start my own business. And then at some point I heard myself 
And I did that. <laughs> and so, but I, I had, a, it was a progression. Mm -hmm. I started out, I tried some different things, call centers, that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into the healthcare insurance industry and I was a leader there and I was a subject matter expert and I liked mentoring. And it was like, there it is again, you're teaching. And so I'm like, okay, it all came together. Awesome, awesome. And I like what you said, it was a progress. And so, you know, once again, those of you that are just like, okay, what do I do? You know, try a couple of things, be okay with that and know that it's okay. And so, of course, powerful conversation with you, Tessa. Thank you so much. And so what is your website and your email address so that our viewers can find out more information about you? Well, my website is www.borrowmymba.com. And my email address is info at borrowmymba.com. Yes. So once again, Tessa, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here on Talk of Business with Beverly. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you viewers for watching. And remember, you know, as entrepreneurs, we certainly want to make sure that we're not just addressing our business needs, but also our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial needs as well. Thank you. Until next time, take care.